Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video we are going through everything you need to know about the game. There are 38 Elden Ring tips and tricks in this video. And just quickly before we get into it, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like. All support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description. And let's get into it. So in the background, there is random gameplay. The game is not yet available. I haven't had early access or anything like that, so I can't go through and show you exactly what is going on. I am hoping to provide further tips and stuff when the game does come out. I already have other videos on the channel, and I plan to do a lot more. So if you are interested in this game, make sure you stay tuned to this channel. And we're going to start off with number one. You have ten different classes that you can choose from when starting Elden Ring. We have covered these in another video separate on the channel. I'm not going to go into too much detail on a lot of these tips, just because doing so will make the video significantly longer. And if I haven't already covered it on the channel, I do plan to cover it in a future video. Number two, you have crazy armor and stuff that you can use to change the appearance of your character, including things like a pumpkin helmet. You are not limited to your starting armor for any of the classes. Number three, you will also have different art for non-unique weapons that you can find as you are playing the game and equip them to your weapons. However, if they're unique, they come with their own art. So basically a skin for the weapons. Number four, unlike Dark Souls games, Elden Ring is an open world game. Number five, in the open world of Elden Ring, you have a world map and you have different fast travel areas to make traversal much better. And it's going to make it so much better if you've already explored a certain area. Number six, you will not start off with said map. You will need to find yourself map fragments. Number seven, for those players that are not interested in a map, the dungeons in the game will not have a map at all, leaving you with nothing but your own mental ability to figure out the dungeon. Number eight, some dungeons will be really hard to find, some will be well hidden, so look out for statues that will guide you in the direction of some of the dungeons, and don't forget to explore to find others. Some will require that you use double jump with your mount and stuff, as they'll be hidden behind walls and other things like that. Number 9, there are different types of dungeons in Elden Ring, some being legacy and giving you the nostalgia of previous titles, but in the open world setting. Number 10, there are plenty of hidden areas in the game, so Elden Ring is going to really, really encourage exploration. This isn't going to be a game you jump on and for your first time ever you speedrun. This game is going to be a slow-paced game, that you take your time with. Number 11, there are caves, dungeons, and you even get caravans roaming the world that have these massive guys like pulling them along, and they have the potential for some great loot. So again, the exploration is being like really, really encouraged. Number 12, you can rest at something called a site of grace. You can also upgrade with your runes and stuff whilst you're resting, but beware, these sites, when you use them, will respawn all enemies in the area, although they are player checkpoints, which stops you needing to travel so far to take down certain bosses, especially after you die to them, because that is going to happen a lot. Number 13, this game features a day and night cycle, and the Sites of Grace we previously spoke about let you choose how long to rest, as certain enemies will only spawn during certain times. Number 14, you are going to want to find Melina when you play the game. She is a finger maiden, and she is going to give you the ability to summon your own horse slash mount. These mounts can double jump, and they will actually prove to be really helpful in certain areas of combat. Some bosses are going to be easier on foot, some are going to be easier whilst you're on your mount. Number 15, you can call in your mount whenever you want to, as long as you are outside of dungeons, and your mount can use these things called spirit springs to launch high into the air, reaching places that double jump will simply not reach. Number 16, fight as many bosses in this game as you can. You do have the ability to run away from certain bosses, but you have the sights of grace, and there are other things in the game that will help you with the boss fights. You're not going to be spawning too far away from the bosses in the game, so you can keep going back and trying again and again and again, but you would also have the ability, due to the open world setting, to go and take down a couple of enemies in a different area, maybe level up a little bit, and then go back to the previous boss. 
Number 17, in turn, don't forget that you are playing Elden Ring. Boss fights are going to be tough. This game is not going to hold your hand in any way at all. So make sure you are using your jump, roll and parry to master these fights. You're going to have to face these bosses time and time again until you get it right. Number 18, keep an eye out for Stakes of Marika, as these are going to be another respawn system. You're not going to be able to upgrade things like you can at Sites of Grace, but you can get these even closer to boss areas, making it easier and faster to get back to your dead body and collect your runes. You're not going to be able to fast travel to the Stakes of Marika, and each new one that you place will remove the old one. They are just used as a secondary respawn point, but they're going to be really helpful. Number 19, you can lock onto enemies in the game, so make sure that you are always choosing the right enemy at the right time and have fun mastering the combat in Elden Ring. Number 20, as well as your all-out aggressive combat, stealth is also viable in the game. You can sneak up behind enemies and you can backstab them. The weak, grunt-type enemies will die to a single stab, but those that don't, if you want to, if they're aggroed and you're taking too much damage, you can run away, you can lose the aggro from that enemy, then you can go back and you can backstab them again. There's going to be lots of ways to beat this game and have uh, like an easier time, a better time in the game, a less frustrating experience. It's just about gathering the experience in the first place to figure out these little sort of mechanics and features in Elden Ring. Number 21, you will get something called a smithing station in Elden Ring, which will allow you to upgrade your weapons and armor. Number 22, as well as melee combat in the game, you will also get magic. Among the 10 classes in the game, you'll have different stats on each of them, helping you lean into different builds, including a level 1 class called Wretch, which is going to give you the most freedom, but will be the most difficult to get into and get the hang of. Number 23, spells cannot be used an infinite amount of times with no cost. You have FP or focus points in Elden Ring, so pay attention to your stats and the blue bar, which is your FP. Number 24, there are three bars at the top left of your screen. Red is going to be your health, blue, which is your FP or your focus points, and green, which is going to be your stamina bar. You are going to need stamina to use your combat rolls, to use your weapons and swing and strike with them. So pay attention to those bars at the top of your screen. Number 25, Elden Ring is not just a solo play, single player game. You have online co-op and online PvP. I have done a separate video for this on the channel. That one is actually upcoming. And there is no local or offline multiplayer and no cross-play. But there is cross-generation support, which is handy for those on the older and newer systems. Basically, PS4 can play with PS5, and the Xbox One can play with the Series X and S. Also, when you join someone else's game, you will take all of the runes you have collected, so your currency, you'll take it all back to your own single-player game. Number 26, it has been confirmed that Elden Ring will have New Game Plus, which seems to be a scarce feature in games now for whatever reason. But there will also be multiple endings if you are interested in the lore of the game. Number 27. There is a crafting system in Elden Ring, which you'll be able to use when you find yourself a crafting kit. Number 28. Along with the crafting system, you will be able to get your hands on cookbooks, which is going to let you craft more advanced items. Number 29. There is a round table hold, which is going to let you upgrade your weapons and you can be taught new spells. It's like a central hub in the game. Number 30, there are no save points in this game. You do not save Elden Ring. The game is going to provide you with checkpoints in the form of Stakes of Marika or Sites of Grace, and the game is going to constantly auto-save. Number 31, if you die, you are going to lose all of your currency, which is known as runes. You can, after you die, make your way back to your dead body and reclaim your runes, but if you die on your way, all that currency is lost. You get one opportunity after you die to salvage your lost runes. Number 32. Runes can be used to not only purchase weapons, but they will also be used to level up. Number 33. Weapons will have attribute scaling, so depending on your attributes like strength or dexterity, a weapon could be stronger, and you can find this out in the weapon details menu. Number 34. As well as attribute scaling, some weapons have attribute requirements. As an example, some weapons might require over 20 dexterity to use. Number 35, there is a load mechanic in the game in the form of equipment weight. 
This will affect your movement speed and your evasive maneuverability, so don't over encumber yourself in Elden Ring. It's only going to hold you back. Number 36, there are things called spirit ashes, which will summon help in the form of different spirits. Number 37, you can also find a spirit tuner, which will be able to upgrade your spirit ashes, as they were nerfed through betas due to them being too powerful. And then at number 38, last but definitely not least, prepare to die. This game is going to be incredibly tough. You are going to get your ass handed to you. It's going to happen a lot. So my final tip is be patient, persevere and accomplish. And that was everything you need to know about Elden Ring. 38 tips and tricks. That is going to wrap up this video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.